Thank you for, uh, for joining us. Earlier on, we were talking about the uh, global hydrogen opportunity. Our next guest is here with their vantage point from Air Products. Please join me in welcoming Eric Guter, who is the Vice President for Mobility Solutions from Air Products. Please welcome Eric to the stage. Eric. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. We said we weren't going to do any more hockey references, but I think we're coming full circle here because you're from California. I am. The LA Kings are playing tonight. Well, I'm rooting for the Oilers tonight. I think that's the right answer. <laughs> that's the right answer. There, there you go. go. You're, you're a crowd favorite already. <laughs> Uh, so earlier on, we were talking about what the opportunities are around the world. Uh, tell us from your vantage point, what is Air Products up to globally? Well, first off, uh, some people don't even know who Air Products is. So let me begin there just by uh, highlighting that we're a leading global industrial gas company and the world's leading producer of hydrogen. Uh, we're also the world's leading producer of hydrogen in Canada and have been doing this for several decades here and proud to be a part of uh, the ecosystem here. That's primarily gray hydrogen. And so what we're moving into now is a future of clean hydrogen because uh, hydrogen, clean hydrogen is needed to fill in where we can't electrify every sector of our economy uh, to get to net zero. So Air Products is working on a number of opportunities around the globe uh, to support that tr energy transition so uh, some of the things that we're working on, we have invested, um, well, we've announced investments of over $15 billion globally uh, by 2027. Uh, this is to support the energy transition uh, externally as well as internally. We have our own net zero by 2050 goals and one third carbon reduction by 2030. B break that down for us though. What, what is that 15 million going into? What are those projects? So we have announced uh, the world's largest green hydrogen project in the world. Uh, it's called NEOM, based in Saudi Arabia. Uh, 650 metric tons a day of uh, clean hydrogen from wind and solar uh, to be moved around globally wherever it's needed. Uh, and fundamentally, the beginnings of remaking global energy trade as it exists today. Uh, we've also announced the uh, largest U.S.-based green hydrogen project, also wind and solar based in Texas. Uh, we've announced the world's, or the U.S.'s largest uh, blue hydrogen facility in conjunction with hydrogen production in Louisiana. And right here in Alberta, we've announced previously our $1.6 billion investment in blue hydrogen, leveraging all the natural resources here to support the energy transition here in Alberta and in Canada. Uh, through the leadership of the government, which we're so proud to be a part of. Curious to get your perspective. We've uh, spoken to a few speakers who are based here in Canada. You are based in the U.S. Uh, given the current uh, U.S. administration's Inflation Reduction Act, you, you've also mentioned working with the federal government here in Canada. Tell us about where Canada stands, where do we fare, how far ahead is the U.S. ahead of us? globally, just curious to get your vantage point. Well, I would start by saying, first off, I think everything in the energy transition starts with a policy. Uh, I don't think behaviors would change without some uh, direction change in policy, which uh, sends market signals. And I think that the world leading policy, uh, that signal looks like mandates and subsidies in some form or fashion uh, to signal we need clean energy production. We also need the development of a clean energy market whether that be in transportation or heavy industry, which is the thesis for hydrogen. So you need all of that coming together simultaneously. I think that that's been going on for some time now. Canada is uh, doing a great job, as well as other jurisdictions. You mentioned the US and the IRA, which is now probably the world's leading policy in my global position in terms of stimulating clean hydrogen uh, offtake. So, but what I like about that is a lot of jurisdictions are kind of trying to play catch up now because it's a global problem. Uh, they want to attract investment, create jobs as much as they want to decarbonize. So all that has to work hand in glove together. And I think Canada has been doing a phenomenal job and, and has been tremendously supportive of the things that we're doing. 
We've uh, talked about some of the uh, opportunities, touched on some of the uh, challenges so far this morning. What are the biggest challenges as you see them on this, uh, on this path to net zero? Well, having been in hydrogen for over 60 years, I think now we see all of this global attention. It's pretty fascinating. You're really I mean, ahead I, of the game. I, I, yeah, I, I, I've been in the hydrogen space for my entire career, 30 years with air products. And uh, what's fascinating about that is, for the first time in my career, my family now knows what I do for a living because it's become that ubiquitous. And, uh, but with that global attention, that attracts a lot of new market entrants, which is phenomenal. We're gonna need a lot of uh, players uh, in this new market. We're gonna need a lot of new market entrants, a lot of technology development to upscale and clean hydrogen. What concerns me is that we uh, misstep early out of the gate uh, working with people that don't necessarily have the experience, especially when it comes to safety, uh, because if we have a safety mishap, that is gonna um, uh, derail or has the potential to derail the energy transition in a significant way because of you know, people's fears around change and it's a new energy market even though it's been around for uh, decades and decades and decades. I think it's so, so important to, that we get this right from the get-go, creating reliable, robust supply chains uh, to, for resulting in a good consumer experience and that we do that safely. We've uh, heard from various uh, leaders in the industry this morning talking about which sectors uh, I guess might be affected first and uh, I believe it was uh, Nancy Southern from ATCO that had suggested it was probably the industrial sector, that it was probably transportation. How do you see it? I, I see those working together simultaneously. Um, heavy industry, uh, hydrogen, clean hydrogen uh, supply to heavy industry can underpin investments that also um, are scaled up to support transportation sector decarbonization. If you think about it, that's one of the things that we're doing here with our investment in Canada, in Edmonton, is that we've oversized our facility. Not only are we providing uh, industrial quantities of hydrogen to industrial uh, off-takers like IOL, who's making renewable diesel, to uh, reduce the carbon intensity of transportation fuels. But we're also uh, installing a liquefaction facility, which in our view is the only way you can get to scale with zero emission uh, clean hydrogen offtake. And so we're what we call a piggyback facility. We can support both and we're creating infrastructure for that. In fact, uh, today I'm here to announce that we're going to install the first multimodal hydrogen refueling station in Edmonton associated with our investment here uh, that can support light duty and heavy duty offtake, first liquid scale, uh, liquid and commercial scale fueling station here in Edmonton. So really proud to, to be here to announce that. Well, we thank you for that. Thank you for making that announcement here. Congratulations to you. And I'd be remiss, we couldn't have done it without the support of Entercan, who is a huge investor in this and helping us do that. We think this is a first step in uh, gaining support and adoption and experience with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Uh, and this can be used as a model to build out f uh, further station networks that will support the decarbonization of transportation, which is really important here uh, in Canada just because of the cold weather climate, particularly, um, you're gonna need, or we're gonna need, uh, an all of the above approach. And uh, it's not to dimi diminish the role of electrification. Uh, I think we need both. And what's most important is that we do this quickly. Every ton of CO2 we abate today is a ton that I don't have to worry about decades later. And given where we are in climate change, in the precipice of reaching one and a half degrees C, we have to act with speed. So, so. Uh, you mentioned the weather, which is a component here. Yes, something that's also a uh, factor here in Canada is the geography. And I've heard you talk about Edmonton, and we do thank you for making that announcement and congratulate Air Products on that. Do you think about the geography and whether or not that is a, uh, a setback at all here in Canada? No, in fact, I think it's um, a unique opportunity. If you think about it, Canada has been providing a lot of energy, uh, both domestically and as an export. And in the context of the Russian-Ukraine crisis and the concern around global energy security, I think that positions Canada extremely well, given its natural resources, its commitment to the energy transition, and hydrogen having it a role in that, that it can be a, a, a first, one of the first movers, 
and create uh, the next clean energy supply chain with huge uh, production here underpinning uh, domestic consumption as well as an export market, uh, whether that be to the U.S. or other geographies around the globe. There are natural geographies that are importers and exporters of clean energy. Uh, Canada is a natural exporter. Countries like Japan and uh, Southeast Asia and South Korea, all natural importers of clean energy. So I think that presents a very exciting and unique opportunity that uh, Canada has uh, uh, to take advantage of. Uh, just a few minutes left in this conversation. You mentioned the uh, geopolitical situation, which of course has uh, highlighted energy security around the world. Has this accelerated the hydrogen conversation? Well, I cer certainly hope so. It, it seems to be. I think you, if you look around the room and the, just the, the amount of participation here uh, tells you how much energy and momentum there is around the transition. I think the energy security issue is, is accelerated that, absolutely. Uh, but I think there are just a tremendous amount of committed people that want to address the threat of climate change and they want to be a part of uh, doing something good for society. And I think that's represented here by all of the attendees here, which, you know, I've been to a lot of these conferences. They're usually out the door in, in many conferences by this time of day. This here. is full. full. So this is great. So this is well done to the, the, the team of folks here on the ground. Uh, just before we let you go, um, given all of these elements that you had mentioned, the uh, what's happening around the world, uh, the, the challenges uh, with respect to getting hydrogen on that path going forward, uh, depending on who you talk to, we're either headed for a recession or not. What is uh, most top of mind for you? What do you think about most? Uh, I, I, for us, we're committed to this. Uh, it's part of our vision, our sustainability goals underpin our growth ambitions. So they're married together. Uh, clean hydrogen is a huge part of that. We think we have a tremendous global role to play in that given our breadth of experience. If we're not a first mover, we can't enable all the things to happen downstream of the production. The production is almost the easiest part. We need uh, supply chains. We need them at scale. We need manufacturing capabilities. We need uh, trained workforces. So we need to move as fast as we possibly can, uh, leveraging our, uh, the strength of our balance sheet and our commitment from our CEO on down, as well as our board of directors, to uh, advancing air products vision for the energy transition and clean hydrogen. We thank you kindly, we thank you for your time, and we thank you for your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.